everyone for our Women's Day event. We have so many things in store for you today. But first, if you don't know who Justice Desk Africa is, we are a human rights non-profit organization based in Cape Town, South Africa, operating all across Africa in Kenya, Tanzania, South Sudan, the Gambia, Sierra Leone, so many others. Please check out our website. We have QR codes on the table here. If you want to... And then need to get him another one. Just take a scan, snap of it. All right, are you guys ready to see what is happening here today? We have a very exciting installation for our Ntika Yetemba project, which is our boys project for against gender-based violence. We have this cool arch where people are going to be signing today to pledge against gender-based violence. We have our Ntika Yetemba coordinator here. Please say a quick hi. We got some of our big brothers. Who missed the consent? Mr. Consent himself is here. Yeah, backstory. Get to front. Backstory, his nickname is Mr. Consent because he understands consent. Yeah. Like he's always the guy at Nziga that's talking about consent, preaching consent. That's why he has the nickname. You get it. And, and, yes. and please rush to waterfront because we're going to be doing wonders in this beautiful stage. We need you right here, right now, as we're talking. Five must hit and you must be here. Love you. <laughs> so let's see what else is happening here. We have a very exciting Korean and South African exhibition happening with zines. So let me show you some of the zines that the girls from our Mbukoto project has made for our South Korean and South African collaboration. They had a workshop with some South Korean artists and they created these zines. Which one is your favorite? Leave a comment of which one of these scenes are your favorite. Let's go have a look at what else is happening. Right. Let's check in with our CEO and founder, Jessica Hi. Dewhurst. How are you feeling today? Awesome, really excited for today. Hope you're all coming. We're waiting for you. A few more minutes before the show. But yeah, really excited. All right. Let's go and see what's happening at the merch table. So we have some awesome merch here today available at the waterfront. All of the proceeds are going to Justice Desk Africa and the amazing projects that we run. We have our Justice Desk Africa shirt. We have our same love, same rights. We have some bracelets. We have our BTS shirt. We have BTS posters, BTS tote bags, BTS bracelets, every single thing here is amazing and definitely come and support our shop because it's going to support Justice Africa and our project. Since we're here with Nazneen Kola, can you tell me a bit more about your project about the Youth Ambassadors? Yes, of course. So the Youth Ambassadors project is a project that currently runs in 30 schools across Africa. It's a, school, it's a project that essentially empowers young children in schools to become an activist and to become the change makers within the community. So any issue that they see, we empower them and we educate them on how to tackle these issues, um, whether it be, you know, protesting, contacting local officials, just essentially helping them make change on a local level. And, you know, the Youth Ambassadors Project is amazing. Our former Youth Ambassador and now Lead Ambassador, Ritendo, is going to be emceeing the event today. So definitely keep an eye out for her. She's fantastic and she's an amazing representative of what everyday activism really means. Thank you so much, Nazneen. So we recently also did a whole exhibition where I took photos of all the Makoto girls in level two, and we did a whole workshop where I taught them how to express themselves through abstract mark making and telling their stories through different colors. So here are some of the pieces from our Makoto club.
those likes. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. today we have the Amici string quartet that has already set up sound 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 check is over so our performances will be starting in about 10 minutes uh, about eight minutes still we also have some ex really really cool artworks from the South Korean artist Sue all the artworks put together Form Table Mountain. How cool is that? Let's see what else is happening. Let's maybe go check in with some of our heroes and see if they have a message for anyone for Women's Day today. Hey everyone! Hi. Do you guys have a message for anyone on the line? of what it means to be empowered. Do you have any other messages for any of the ladies out there for this wonderful month of Women's Month? Love yourself. Love yourself. Love you guys. Do you have anything to say to the women out there? Stay pretty. Stay pretty. All right, Erin is also on the live. If you want to give a shout out. Hey, Erin. All right. Let's see what else is happening. Oh, we have Tina over here. Do you have a message for anyone on the live? Any of the great women out there? All I want to say is. Um, shout out to each and every woman who's watching this um, video, who's watching this live. Um, keep breaking the people that you want to be in. Yeah. Right. And let's hear from one of our big brothers. Do so you have a message for the women out there watching this live? You're a woman's right defender. And so should they be. Okay, that's fine. All right, do we have our intern Ryan who has any messages for the women out there today? For the women out there? Yeah, for Women's Month. For Women's Month. I love you, Mom. Thanks for being the best woman in my life. That's adorable. <laughs> All right, let's have a look and see exactly what this event is about. So we have a musical performance collaboration with award-winning composer and conductor Henry Cheng in partnership with the Michi String Quartet and the Mokoto Girls Choir. The award-winning conductor and composer Henry Cheng has crafted a musical performance that mixes classical and K-pop songs. So for all the other army out there watching this live, the songs from BTS that will be included is yet to come, Dynamite, Blood, Sweat and Tears and Dreamers. And these songs will be mixed with some of Beethoven's symphonies, uh, including the Eroica Symphony, his famous 5th Symphony, 8th Symphony and his 9th Symphony, Ode to Joy. Music has always been a universal language that transcends boundaries and cultures, evoking emotions, memories and sensations that can be deeply therapeutic. This collaboration seeks to transcend cultural boundaries and promote healing and understanding through the unifying force of music.
so that means we're gonna end. If you guys want to know a bit more about the zine workshop that happened, the, the theme and introduction is Women Empowered. It's an art workshop organized to celebrate Women's Month in collaboration with Justice Days Africa. It aims to foster solidarity among women by exploring the power of language. This unique zine workshop provides a platform for participants to connect and create meaningful connections through the essence of Korean language and writing. In the spirit of Women's Month, the workshop title reflects the idea of interconnectedness among women, emphasizing their individuality and collective strength. Inspired by the tradition of fanzines, which originated in the SF fandom, an interest among women of diverse cultures, literature, or music genres. Participants will incorporate Korean words from BTS song lyrics into creative collages with Korean characters, exploring the healing potential of Korea's K-pop culture. Zines have always provided a powerful platform for women to express their vo voices and showcase their creativity. As part of our celebration, we are excited to engage in an exchange with Cape Town, South Africa, where we will introduce diverse scenes and videos created by women from different generations in Korea. This cross-cultural connection enriches the artistic journey and highlights the strength and creativity of women worldwide during this special month. The exhibition will showcase posters and scenes created by five Korean female artists and Justice Days Africa. The Zine Workshop was organized by COFFIS and it was supported by the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism as well as KSPO. Let's have another look at some of the amazing zines that the kids created from the Makoto project. At a later time, we will open up all of these and show them every single page. But we are busy getting ready for the big event the big celebration, there's still a lot to come. Let's go get ready for the event. We are starting very, very soon. Let's say hi to some of our South Korean artists and Joanne Kim, who is the art curator and the organizer of the zine workshop. Do you have any messages for the women watching this for the month of Women Month? Yes, of course. As you have, though, we see that our title of this project is Empowered Women. I believe that everyone is believing in the music and art and in the education. That's the way to empower ourselves. And then please join us at any time. I'm one, so one. moved by what we are doing and what just kids are doing. So, uh, let go. All right, let's get ready for the event because we are starting very soon. All right, hello everybody. Gather around, gather around. Wonderful things are happening here. Thank you all for joining us. It's lovely to see you and welcome to Justice Desk Africa's Women's Month celebration. Africa is an award-winning organization that is spread across 10 African countries with its mission to empower the everyday person to know and defend their fundamental human rights. But before we get into the nitty-gritty and the festivities, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Rutendo Mugwara and I will be your host for this evening's event. Joined alongside me is my wonderful, beautiful co-host, Luko Luyema. Hi everyone, I am Luko Luyema, but my name is too long, so you can call me Luko because Luko Luyema is definitely not catchy. So, yeah. yeah, 
Justices Africa, as I previously mentioned, is a human rights non-profit aimed at educating the everyday individual to know and protect their fundamental human rights. Now, I'm going to hand it over to Luko a bit to explain to you what exactly our mission is as a human rights non-profit. Our mission is to empower everyday people within all societies, but not only that, it's, it's, it's also to educate a bit and give them a better understanding of how to defend the fundamental human rights. In the Justice Days Africa, we have three projects. Firstly, and most importantly, the Youth Ambassadors Project. As a Youth Ambassador, I 110% believe that that is the most important project. Now, I may be a little bit biased, but that's okay. The Youth Ambassadors Project is spread across multiple countries in multiple schools, and its aim is to educate young people within their school systems to know their fundamental human rights, be the change that they want to see, and spread that knowledge across wherever they are, in their communities, in their households, in their schools, and really create change as everyday activists. Then we have our wonderful Nsika brothers, which Luho happens to be. So Nsika and Timba brothers are basically a group of boys, but they're not only boys, they're also my brothers. And we stand against gender-based violence. We say no to toxic masculinity. Mm. We are not bystanders, we are feminists. <laughs> Last but not least, our favorite and the most, okay, the core are the Justice Days Africa group, which is the Imbo Porto Girls. And then. So, the Imbo Porto uh, is a group of women and girls who have been through gender based violence and some of them are even human trafficking survivors. So they're not only girls or women, they are strong women and strong girls. To echo what Luko said and why we are all gathered here today is to celebrate the beautiful, strong and fierce women within our communities and within especially the Mbokodo project. Mbokodo? Yes. Yes, Lana, Lana. For those of us who may be a bit fuzzy in the South African history, I'm seeing a bit of grey hairs here. <laughs> Just an explanation on the Bokodo project. Um, as we know in the Women's March, the phrase that they used was Watinta Bafazi. Watinta Bokodo! For our non closer speaking people, um, it means when you strike a woman, you strike a rock. And the Mbokoto project is basically the rock project. The rock project for our powerful, strong, fierce, fierce girls who you see beautifully displayed behind me, wonderfully photographed, and you'll hear their beautiful voices sing alongside the Amici Quartet, as well as conductor and composer Henry Chen. As I mentioned, I am a youth ambassador. Luko here is a brilliant Nsikaya Temba boy. And I'm standing here, you guys are sitting here, and they are going to be sitting here because of a vision that one woman had. And that one woman is our beautiful founder and CEO, Jessica Dewhurst. We'll play a, just a bit of a video for you guys to understand what exactly is going on when it comes to our beautiful CEO, Jessica. Growing up, I was always told that we were the Rainbow Nation. I was told about the great sacrifices we had made to build a truly free and democratic nation. 
and watched as we celebrated year after year, hearing stories of our nation's great triumphs and how after so much sacrifice, we had finally made it. We were finally equal. At least that's what they told me. Yet what I was seeing wasn't reflecting that. Because if we were free, then why did I grow up being given opportunities based on the color of my skin? If we were equal, why did I grow up being sheltered from all the dangers of this world because of the class I was in? And if we were truly a democratic nation, then why does my voice still hold more value than others? Despite what I was told, it was in this moment that I realized that peace, justice, and true equality was not something that could be won in an election or achieved by the works of a few. And it wasn't the politicians, lawyers, humanitarians, or even the philanthropists who actually were responsible or capable of securing the future we longed for. Instead, I went to our communities, countless of them across the globe, I learned, grew, observed, loved, and was challenged. I witnessed, participated in, and was given the gift of seeing where our true change makers really lie, and the immense power they had to change this world. I learned that true change occurs in the lives of the everyday person, one single, ordinary human being who was determined and courageous enough to stand up for what was right. I saw it in the work of mothers, fathers, teachers, friends, children, community leaders, youth. I saw it in you and in me. I realized then that we didn't need a superhero to change the world because the power to do just that was already in each and every one of us. We were the ones we were waiting for and we are the ones who can truly make that difference. And so I started with Justice Day so because I was shown that it is in the empowerment of the everyday person where real change truly begins. It is not in just one, but in all generations. The power and responsibility to build and uphold systems of justice and peace. We have to do the work to address injustice at all levels of society every single day alongside all people while confronting the roles we play in upholding these systems to protect, defend, and build a society where all people have access to their rights. Because we are not free until we are all free. We are not equal until we are all equal. And we do not have justice until each and every one of us has true access to our rights and freedoms. And we cannot bring about change until every one of us joins the fight. It has been done. It continues to be done. And together, it can be achieved. We just have to start with you. That was a wonderful video from our founder and CEO, Jessica Dewhurst. An incredible woman who has done incredible things that have impacted over two million people globally. Not just in South Africa, not just in the Southern, Af Southern African region, but across the world. And to share more about her story and really the message of the day and why we are here, I would like to introduce Jess. More lovingly known by our project kids as Mama Jess. Give it up for Rotendo. Are you all doing okay? Yeah. Not too cold? Yeah. Even if you are, thank you for being with us. I really appreciate it. Um, and to all our ladies, happy Women's Month. Give it up for yourselves. Um, we are so excited and blessed to be here. Um, Women's Month is our favorite time of the year. Yeah, in South Africa, we usually use it to reflect on a lot of the negative parts uh, of being a woman in South Africa. I know in the first three months alone, we had over 10,000 rapes um, of women, over 150,000 assaults, almost 1,000 women were murdered in just the first three months of this year. And when people look at South Africa, I think a lot of people, that's all they see. They see violence, they see GBV, and a lot of our young people are starting to feel hopeless. Um, I've even heard some people refer to our younger generation as the hopeless generation. But I'm here to tell you that I have seen a very different South Africa. I've seen a South Africa of incredible hope. 
I've seen young people stand up against communities when violence erupts. I've seen young people who are survivors of rape and GBV stand up and say, it does not matter what I've been through. I have the right to stand here, tell my story and leave my country. I've seen young boys who are standing up against toxic masculinity, protecting women, being their authentic selves, encouraging each other to go to counseling. Men, when's the last time you went to counseling? Why are you all looking away from me? Um, really changing the narrative. I do not think that South Africa is hopeless. South Africa is the most incredible place to be. Yes, we have our problems, but I guarantee you we have the young people who have the solutions to those problems. All we need to do is trust them, love them, support them, and they will do the rest. So this month, in Women's Month, yes, we need to reflect on the work that we still need to do. And in order to continue to end gender-based violence, please support Justice Desk. You can make a donation over there, and we'd be very, very thankful. But I also want you to celebrate this month of all the amazing things that women have accomplished, but also the amazing things that our young boys and men in this country are doing to also stand up for the rights of women. Because I guarantee you, there are many out there who are doing everything they can to change the narrative. So, for this celebration, we're gonna have a lot of music, we're gonna have dancing, we're gonna have singing. It's an amazing uh, um, day, not just, we were gonna do this on Women's Day, but because of the taxi violence, we had to, we had to shuffle a bit. But we are still here and I wanna say a massive thank you to some incredible guests who have flown all the way from South Korea to be here to create this entire day for us. Um, last year, I was in Korea giving a talk and I met the incredible Henry, who's probably hiding. Henry Chang, everyone, right over there. And the incredible Joanne. Joanne, you wanna stand up over there? Um, an incredible art curator and music composer who have done amazing work um, and are globally recognized, award-winning um, for this incredible concept, which is music as a healing art. And they were talking to me about that, music being used as a healing art. And I thought to them, wow, that's Justice Desk. Because everything we do, I mean, we took a group of girls to Korea last year, and a bunch of Koreans came to me and said, do they ever stop singing? And I was like, no, that's South Africans, we don't stop singing. But that was the whole thing, is the one universal language that we have is music. Music has an incredible ability to unite us and bring us together. As a nation, we have 12 languages. We have so many different races, religions, cultures, but we have a shared love for music like none other. And tonight, we are gonna use music again to show you the incredible power it has to affect change, to inspire people to want to make a difference, and to also help people in their healing journeys. Our choir are all young girl survivors of rape and GBV. Our boys are incredible young heroes who have put their own lives at risk to stand up against GBV. These are the heroes that our country not only needs, but the ones that we have. So let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate our music. Let's celebrate each other. Let's celebrate this cross-continental beautiful marriage that has just happened here between South Africa and Korea. And just really spend today celebrating not just what we've achieved, but what we will still achieve. I've seen it with my own eyes, the power that these young people have to make a difference. Now we need you to see it as well, to support it, and help us transform the face of this country. So happy Women's Day, thank you all for being here, and enjoy the show. Thanks. All right, lovely people, it's beautiful to see your faces. Now, if you can see, I'm wearing quite a cool shirt, um, and you'll see a bunch of other cool stuff, quite cool bracelets as well I'm wearing. Um, and you feel free to support and purchase what um, from our beautiful Nazneen Cola there by our um, merch shop. And yeah, please, to run this, it runs on donations, it runs on volunteers. Sign up to volunteer, donate, buy merch. Any bit of support is welcome. Now, on to the festivities. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, Allow me to introduce award-winning composer and conductor Henry Chen with, this, with the Amachi Screech String Quartet and our very own Imbomoto Choir who will be singing in Biabafana Ipeli. So the meaning of the song is basically about a person, not a specific person. It's the person telling a story telling their story and like the road or like the road 
to success. Like there's downfalls, there's hatred, but overall, like they are determined to go forward. And in the song, he mentions that, Mama, I will disappoint your haters by making it through life. So could you please welcome the most She's one of the graduates for Amakuhakaz. She's been here in the, in, the, in the program since day one. So please share your love for Michelle, guys. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Shane 
Roberts and officially I come from Bonneville but I've been calling the Justice Taste since 2020. I'd like to recite my poem which I wrote. It starts with a dream. I dream of a country where there's no crime. Where a past and the future is something that if it's bad you leave it behind. Where there's no hardships or regret but always a good deed of something that indeed will lead us all to know and have respect. We should know to leave evil shadows of our past behind, knowing that stepping out of the dark would only lead you to the light. We should build a better future for our new generation to come. A new future where we don't wish to be protected by all, but always are. Not having a feeling of fear or doubt, but being able to shower others with the joy and all about. I wish I could live and enjoy my country in peace. Not because as a woman, but because we all are one. We all have a lot to learn and the justice this will surely help. Piece by piece, little by little, all bad things will become a good thing. And I know it won't be a dream anymore, but it will start to become reality. Wow, that was our incredible machine in Ama Gohakazi. By the way, Ama Gohakazi, it stands for We Strong Warrior Woman. That is what we do at the Justice List. We create strong warrior women. Can we give it up one more time? <laughs> to continue, we have yet another beautiful song. But during this song, we also have a silent protest that will be happening by our Nsikaya Temba boys. A little explanation on the term Nsikaya Temba for us non Tosa speaking people, it means pillars of hope. That is what we see in our young men and that is what you should see within your young men in your communities as well. Pillars of hope that will uplift our communities. As they silently protest, I hope that the messages that are on the boards stay within your hearts as well. So, for a, excuse me, for a second time, I would like to introduce the beautiful Amici String Quartet, performing yet to be. And for a little explanation before we start the song, I'd like to invite Henry Cheng to the stage. Henry. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to Justice Desk for having us, and thank you to the Michi Quartet for playing. Just a little bit about the next song. The next three songs actually you're going to hear tonight is a combination of the K-pop band BTS and the humanistic philosophies of the classical composer Beethoven. The song that you're going to hear now, yeah, Beethoven. Hey. The next song you're going to hear is called Yet To Be. It comes from a song by BTS called Yet To Come. It is one of their last songs that they made by, as a group, talking about the whole entire journey of the last 10 years. All of their struggles, all of their pain, all of their suffering, and all of that they've accomplished. And more importantly, painting a brighter future, that the best is yet to come. And in terms of Beethoven, you'll hear lots of musical fragments from his first symphony to the fifth symphony to the final ode to joy of his ninth symphony this ultimate humanitarian melody of coming together and connecting enjoy thank you
Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be standing in front of you this, this evening. So, as Tenno has said, my name is Ikona. I'm 17 years old and I come from the community of Kailicha. of the Bogoto Club, a member of Amako Hakazi, and a part of Justice Desk Africa. As I might say, joining Justice, I mean, in Bogoto Club and the Justice House has been the best decision I've ever made in my life. I mean, growing up in a community where wearing a short skirt as a young girl is, is you feel scared because there are perpetrators out there who see no aging young girls, but see girls who they can make their wives. It's not the best feeling. So I'm not being able to fully express themselves in terms of gender identity and staying in the closet, as it said, because they're scared of the community. After joining Justice Desk, I gained the power and all the knowledge I needed. I've traveled the world because of Mbogoto and the Justice Desk. I'm one of the luckiest girls who had the opportunity to go to South Korea last year to see Justice Test has provided a huge platform for me to unleash all this power in me. And after all the sessions, the training, it has given me the power to stand in front of you today and give my testimony. The Justice Test has is the work that they, they, they make people feel empowered. And standing in front of you, I feel more empowered than ever. <laughs> the Justice Test and the Mogodo Club makes you feel loved, appreciated, and embraced. It makes you feel your presence is accepted and appreciated. And that is what all women need, to be appreciated, loved, and not undermined with their power. So this is why I say today, join the movement. As little as telling the next person to you, your friend, your sister, that something is wrong and we need to take a stand. It makes the difference. Yeah. Amen, amen. Thank you to our wonderful Eco on that beautiful testimony. We hope to produce many more young warrior women like Eco throughout our incredible projects. All right, on to the next beautiful song hosted by the Amici Quartet. Blood, sweat, and tears. And again, for a little insight on what exactly the song is meant to be, um, I invite Henry Sheng again. All right, I hope you're all enjoying the music. The people testimonials. The next song, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, is a combination of another BTS song, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, literally talking about the struggles the pain and the difficulty of decisions that we have to make while we grow up. It's a combination with Beethoven's Symphony No. 3, nicknamed the Eroica, that was originally dedicated to the not, then not Emperor Napoleon. And the famous story about the symphony is that after Napoleon declared himself Emperor, he scratched out the name. But the, at the end of the day, what's left is the beauty and the courage of the music of Beethoven and the message of no matter of our failures, no matter of our struggles, that there is always a brighter future. Thank you. Oh, yeah. 
this is the poem that you guys saw behind us. It's written by one of our Mbobojo sisters, which is Utuma. And she's here today. Wow, so much talent, guys, I tell you. Here to speak more about the healing powers of music and arts, as well as the importance of the collaboration between South, South Korea and South Africa, are conductor Henry Chen and creator, cre creator Joanne Kim. So please give a round of applause for Kim and Henry. Hello again. Hello everyone. Hello. I love you guys so much. Hello, I'm Joanne Kim from Korea. And I'm so honored and thrilled to be here today to celebrate Women's Month. Yes, let's celebrate. I think exactly a year ago, I met Amazing Jess in Seoul. Yes. And actually what we connected to us is BTS and art, which is connecting us today as well. Thank you for having us. And then I also want to give a warm applause to our amazing Book of the Choir. Because it's not only about the how Justice Desk, what they are doing is amazing and then the great of the jazz and the, what it really, really led Henry and me to hear was the Umbukotomer's special voice. Wasn't it special? Yes! I believe in a really music as a healing art, strongly. And also today, I want to have this opportunity to introduce our collaboration as you can see behind of the stage, we see the paintings and the photos of these beautiful girls. And artist Mika, an amazing designer. She's a master of everything. We are so, so amazing. She's the one who led this art project with the girls, as you can see on the, this whole the portrait photography with the drawings. The photography was um, the, done by Mika, but the, all the, each painting was done by each girl you see with their face. They chose three colors and painted by themselves in a way they feel about themselves. So each one is very, very special. It has their own story at the same time. And uh, on our also left side of the stage, these are the magazine we made with us for 30 hours. And then uh, please take uh, the, af after the concert, please take uh, your time to take a look at their zines. Not only about music, I believe in that uh, each one's voice. There is a power of using your voice and your story. And then this whole girls made an amazing the job and having their story here. And they chose each of the themes, um, peace, love, power, and also the other, the, all the beautiful words as their theme and make this very beautiful magazines. And at the last, the, um, the please, there are the amazing another three songs are will be played, uh, and the end of that we will celebrate with a very delicious Korean food. We <laughs> food. Okay, I'm I'm so so happy to be here, and then I think it's time to introduce again Henry and my husband also. <laughs> That's a lovely introduction. <laughs> this 
this, this, we've been here for about 12 days, and every single day I've been blown away by what Justice Test does. And I'm incredibly thankful to have this opportunity. And I hope everyone here can support what they're doing and what the girls are doing. We're here, I am here, because of the sincere belief of the power of music to heal. For me, personally, music has saved my life. And I'm just overjoyed. It's, it's an inspiration to hear each and every one of your stories and get to know you the little bit that I had the opportunity to do. So thank you to the Book of the Girls, thank you to the Justice Desk, and thank you all for being here, and please continue to support this amazing organization. And without them and their tolerance and with us, because we were definitely uh, sometimes. So yeah, I'd like to thank them, and without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. So yeah, thank you. Yes. Also, the I'd like to special. I'd like to introduce our two special guests who's here. Um, Su Kyung, can you send off? She's an amazing artist who um, made this whole journey with us all the times and as you can see she's filming and we will have a beautiful music video in the end so please um, stay on the tune for Justice Desk Instagram and then also the painting you see back, back here is, um, the, it's um, the Table Mountains we uh, the every day that we pray to, to Table Mountain please give us chance to have this concert today and then the, also the, um, the the amazing stories that we got together so that she wanted to present in her paintings so here is her painting and please give a warm applause to Suki <laughs> So, the, do you remember there was a very interesting and the moving illustration in the beginning with the song that's uh, called the Impi song and then there is an artist, Chang Yun Young, who made it last. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, and the, all those videos you will see also later, and then everything is we are done with this amazing artist together as a whole team production. So, thank you, and please enjoy. Yo, guys, I do not know about you, but I'm definitely pretty hyped out. They're gonna be serving Korean food. I do not know why you guys said, so please, I mean, you do not eat Korean food every day, guys, you do not. Yeah, nice. I guess a nice break from all the pop and the veggies and the whatnot. So yeah, afterwards stay for a nice Korean snack. And then, yeah, like as Joan said, please do support. Um, any BTS fans here? Lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. You'd be happy to hear that the next song the Amici Quartet are going to perform is Dynamite by BTS. Also, if you can spot clearly, I'm wearing our wonderful Mbokodo for BTS bracelet. And there are many posters and BTS shirts and other, other stuff at our merch shop. So please do support, donate, everything. And yes, let us enjoy uh, the Amici Quartet's rendition of Dynamite.
Wow, I mean, I mean, I mean, here at the Justice Days Africa, we believe that gender based violence is as much as a man's problem. Here to explain is one of my Pintika brothers, Sipo Setu. Um, hello everyone. Hi, um, I hope you are all doing great. Um, so my name is Seposetu Ejo. I come from Nyanga, the township Ejo. called Nyanga. <laughs> yeah, so um, I basically come from Nyanga and today I'll be sharing my story with you guys. Um, so when I grew up, I grew up witnessing a lot of violence. I grew up um, witnessing a lot of violence in my community and within my family. And uh, so that left me eager, like I wanted to do a change in my community. Um, I saw a lot of me, like women being abused by men. I saw a lot of human rights being violated. Um, men were using substance abuse or abusing substances and they were going in and out of jail. So I never grew with a role model. And um, I wanted to be the role model for the next kids that were coming up, you know. And, um, So yeah, and um, so and I joined Itika. So I joined in, um, the Justice Desk. I heard of it when I was 14 years old, and um, they were busy with the Bogoto Club, and I loved it. And that's when I I wanted to join. But they were like, "It's a girls' club. I can't join because I'm a boy." And then I'm like, "Create a create a guys' club." I mean, <laughs> you know, because I believe that um, us as boys and men, we have to be included in this. Also, we have to be play a bigger part in this. Yeah. So after that, they created Intika, and it's doing wonders. It has changed lives. It has done great stuff for us um, as the Intika boys. Like it has taught, a, it has taught us a lot of things. A lot of things. It has taught us to love. It has taught us to be real men, to be real change makers. You know, and um, it, they gave us courage. And today, I just want to ask everyone to please be with us. Stand with us and let's fight and create a peaceful world. Thank you so much. for short and just a little bit on the previous song that the Mbokodo girls performed it's called Izimange and the meaning behind the song is you know I've come so far and I'm taking a look back at you know the mountains that I've overcome how far I've come the challenges I've faced how far I've gone and how much I've conquered and how much I will continue to conquer which is the message that is carried throughout the entire Bokodo project. Now, I would like to introduce our final song performed once again by our beautiful Bokodo girls. I know, I heard a no here. Yes, it's painful to end this <laughs> wonderful event. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. But yes, our final song our Bukonda Choir will be performing Dreamers.
Yes, you. You, you look very nervous. Yes. Young Yunyo.